So I made an observation to myself the other day when I see some of the third world countries getting online and finding people from the first world. And they speak very little English and they're saying, show me your boobs, show me your boobs. And I'm just like, you know what? Coming from a place of sexuality, aggressive sexuality, like in the third world, even in the first world, it's a very, very basic instinct. It is an instinct that, yeah, it's about procreation in life, but it lacks maturity. It lacks sophistication. <clears throat> it lacks it lacks intellectual capacity. Now, in the first world, we have people programmed to be not only sexual, but also intellectual. So they're merging those two worlds together. So you'd be the ultimate human to somebody else who's looking for a sex bot as well as someone that can offer them something to the relationship. But when you go to the third world country and they don't have access to aggressively advanced education, what is their first go-to? Sex. Their first go-to is sex and dominating somebody else. And that right there tells me everything of why you have to understand why we're going through what we're going through as far as this great reset. Because there are predators out there that that's the only thing they can think of. Literally, that's the only thing they can think of. Now, we have an advanced society in the first world where, yes, you are programmed to have sex and get off on visual images or somebody else, but there was also uh, different occupations and um, skills that you can learn along with that. So that made it okay. You could do your skills for eight hours a day and then go have your sex the rest of the time if that was something that you were geared towards. But when you think about a third world country, so it's sex and religion in a third world country because there's some kind of religion and there's rampant amount of sex. So now, so then you see what happened in the 1960s. I was listening to Timothy Leary or at least his biography and how he, you know, he's part of the Weather Underground from back in the 1960s and how he was going to take over America was through the drugs, but it wasn't like take over America, like destroy it. When you think about it, it was like saying, okay, we're tired of the rampant imperialism. And of course, yeah, we could say that the British empire helped us figure that or helped us, <laughs> uh, well, once they helped us, taught us those, characteristics but um but yeah it, it the weather underground and all of the 1960s was the weakening of the nation through the sexual revolution though it it was even before that in the 1920s and the flappers and the reefer madness and the naked people you know the josephine bakers of the day and all those the the different places that sex was sold and the opium trade and the prostitution and all of that. It's just like, oh my God. And so, yeah. And so I was listening to Timothy, Timothy Leary and then listening to stuff about the, you know, what is the hidden pandemic? And that is the mental illness that's in our society. And so now, see, there's such a sophisticated campaigns are going on at this point. And when you finally have mental clarity and you can see things for what they are, <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. But 
Yeah, as far as the mental illness going on, when you have things trapped inside of you that are programmed in a specific way, and it's because you've been taking on the world's programming through either therapies or just your travels, some of those programmings will metastasize and become something that actually takes over and influences your behaviors, your thought process. And so then I realized, oh gosh, yeah, the mental illness, the cancer disease and chronic illness, even the sexual orientations is whatever has taken over your body, trapped in your body at the time of a climate change that causes excessive growth. And then one day you were one way one day and all of a sudden through nature and nurture, you become something different. Your thought process changes, your belief system changes then you become a certain person that the core of who they are is now, well, the core of who they are. The programming becomes the core of who they are until they're able to release that programming. And so I'm pretty, I keep things unstable right now. I mean, I, I challenge my J world a lot of things, not that they're going to take on the challenges because there's a lot to, to do. But I think one of the ways that you don't have to like embarrass yourself <laughs> when you think about it in the J world is that instead of taking on all the, the, the resistance out there, well, instead of taking all the, you release, the, you, you stop resisting what's going on and you find ways to develop an argument for what's going on. And you don't have to name out every single thing that you have violated as far as the life against your body or the life against your kids' bodies or the life against your animals' bodies. But if you're going to throw stones, those in glass houses can't throw, should not throw stones because if you're going to critique the government and resist and call them on their shit, well, they have every right to call you on your shit. But since you're not that influential, they're not going to call you on your shit. So they'll let you just keep resisting yourself out of existence. Even though you're in the J world, which one's going to be more influential? Your resistance or my information? And that's what you're up against is the resistance or my information. And so even people in the J world have to figure out what's going to take over. Is Are they going to be able to assimilate and develop new arguments for what's going on? Or are they going to resist themselves out of existence? Because they'll be too busy resisting and they won't get out of harm's way when all the conditions are right. And so the key to survival is to keep the pressure going because it will only get worse. And so I, yesterday I was pretty aggressive about taking my J world a step further than where they are. Okay. I might alienate some of you, some of my J crowd because of my recent challenges, as far as challenging them to say, where do they come up short? If they're going to criticize the government, what could the government uncover about them? That they probably wouldn't. But then I'm going to take a step further. You know the J world. You know the antibiotics. You know all the things that have violated the laws against the body. You know taking on pets is like enslavement. If you even want to see it that way. Okay. Put yourself in the place of a pet or any kind of animal under captivity. And so I was challenging people in my J world to figure out how to, how to itemize where they have gone wrong in their world based upon the J world, because obviously mainstream is not going to call you on stuff that they've already condoned and it's been mainstreamed. So could you look at yourself and put something out there that says that you may have done some things wrong in your world and you're willing to atone for it versus you challenging or resisting what's going on. And so, but I do not want to get too comfortable with the social capital. I would rather you think I'm a sellout in a bootlicking biatch than to feel too comfortable with people who fail to take accountability. I want people to survive and those who can handle the pressure might have a chance and there's no guarantee. Okay. And so yesterday I was looking at some people's Facebook and even the groups that, or even the pages that they run and the, the tone and the theme of the pages reminded me of what I was back in 2014, today. Though someone thought I meant that someone back in 2014 reminded me of what I was like today, but I'm just like, no, it's the other way around. When I was in 2014, 
2013, 2014, 2015, I was so heavily into the conspiracy world. And against anyone with the, the whole stars, the satanic stars, right? I was really into the anti-Illuminati, anti-Freemasonry. And it was, it was, it was lost down those rabbit holes for, for years, okay? And so when I saw someone that acted just like me, though I wasn't hunting anyone, I wasn't going in looking for a Freemason and then going in and messaging them and saying that they're this or that. And I didn't scream because people, Freemasonry wasn't really, it was out, it was known, but it wasn't like publicized. People weren't coming out and saying, oh yeah, I'm a Freemason because they saw the backlash. They saw the people so anti-Freemason. I mean, you know, Alex Jones, he was so against the Illuminati and Freemasonry. That's the conspiracy world was going up against the system that is going to do some changes. And they then used, they had a patsy called the Freemasons. And so... And so yesterday, the day before, I saw someone posting stuff that was just so reminiscent of what I was like. And you could feel the caustic, acid, brutal tone and communication against a stranger. Against a stranger that did nothing to her. And so that was a wake-up call to me. Because that is called human hunting. When you're purposely seeking somebody out who does not, who did nothing to you and you are now sending them so much, neg not even negative, like brutal, destructive vitriol, anger and disgust and such destructive energy to a stranger. That was, that's human hunting. I had to deal with that the last seven years. People hunting me down, saying that I killed this and I did that and blah, blah, blah. And that was the mainstream media's way of forcing me to now explain my thesis. Because I had to. Either I was going to succumb to the hunting and be destroyed, or I was going to pull back and not say anything and let the agenda roll on with no other alternative pathway, or I was going to stand up to it. And I stood up to it. And I had to say, okay, I made a mistake here. Okay, now we're not on any diets. Of course, get off the garlic oil and the colloidal silver. No remedies, um, eat all food in the food supply. And that catalyst to that, when you think about it, when I realized that, was that was on the brink of the whole pandemic. And so I released my book, my second book in the 2020, and then proceeded to write another book along with that. And it was just like, I knew there was more I had to say. But, um, but yeah, that was a human hunting that I had to deal with. And so... You know, the Freemasons out there have not, they don't owe you shit as far as an explanation. You owe them tolerance to understand where the fuck they're coming from. They don't owe you anything. They've been telling you the last how many years what's going to happen, what's going on, why. And you have the Democrats and the Republicans. The Democrats say one thing, Republicans say another thing. There is, there is, misconceptions, mischaracterizations, there's perceptions of what they think is going on based upon people's stories. And you have people out there who are fanning the flames of division and destruction. No different than what happened with me. I didn't kill anyone or even my dog. There's no one died in my world from me. Bruce Wilmot died from his years in the medical system and my dog died in the fucking vet system. Again, she was still alive when I took her to the vet. She didn't die in my house. She died at the fucking vet system when they gave her a shot. She was still alive. Yeah, we're all suffering. But no, suffering to live is, thing, is a thing. But not necessarily if we haven't, haven't been trained with some kind of infrastructure built around it to keep things, you know, whatever. But so that's the thing is you have to now stand up. For, if you have something to say, if you have something to say, now you have to stand up to public opinion and explain your case. But again, the Freemasons didn't do shit to you. You're the one that's going after them, hunting them like fucking animals. And so I saw my face about 10 years ago, recently. And I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed to see that. I'm ashamed of that's how I was. But when you don't know any better, you do what you do until you look at yourself in the mirror. 
I remember my husband was saying at one point when he heard he was telling he was talking about something where people were yelling at each other or whatever, and they don't hear what they say when they're yelling at each other. So he re recorded somebody and played back what they were saying, so they can hear what they sound like. My husband's fucking smart. He told me this one day. Because I was probably going off the deep end on something. And he was like, you know, I recorded somebody before to show them what they sounded like when they were yelling and screaming about stuff. My husband's fucking smart. He basically was showing you what the internet was going to do for us in the future. When you look at yourself in the mirror, at your peers who are dealing with whatever bullshit... And you're just like wincing and you're like, oh my God, I got to block and delete. It's very difficult to watch yourself do what you have done and you didn't, you haven't even seen it until you look through Facebook and you look at somebody else who pisses you off. And so then I said, well, you know, disease and death equals 10 plagues slash accountability. Okay, so, you know, I made that a correlation about the ten plagues and the exodus and the firstborn to, yeah, the Jews leaving Egypt and the part of the Red Sea and all of that stuff, right? But then we think about your body. Your body right now is going through a disease death called ten plagues and it's the accountability because you kept taking things that were against your life. Antibiotics, surgeries. Remedies, herbs, extracts, detoxes, things that your immune system does not want to have. And when it goes through an immunological response, when you think about it, those antibodies are offspring. Just like when you have a child, they're against your body. They're sucking the life out of you when you have a child. Imagine having trillions and trillions of antibodies because of your practices in the herb world, in the detox world, in the remedies world. And so you think about the 10 plagues, it's the accountability. It's all of those little demons you're holding inside causing water turning to blood. People are bleeding pro prolifically. When you think about Ebola or any of those types of hemorrhaging, you know, um, Blood is too thin, and so you bleed easily. Skin is paper thin. You're bleeding easily. Frogs, and that, and that could be just all the different, you know, the, the, the tardigrades that become so huge. You have to have tardigrades, but then when they become so huge and numerous, it's because you haven't released them. They're turning into something that is like a monster inside of you, the Garden of Eden. Lice, yeah, pestilence. Flies, well, necrotizing fasciitis holding dead things inside of you. You're not releasing stuff. Livestock pestilence. Well, when you are, when you are, <sighs> part of you has pestilence and you're like, you're lots of, you're human farming, you're broad bear, you're breeding children, breeding offspring all the time. Boils. That's a lot of antigen antibody programming. And that's a lot of growth from infection that you hold inside. Okay, locusts or hail, hard nodules and locusts. It could be also another form of tardigrade that became so numerous and so huge. Darkness, dementia. When you're losing your memories. The killing of the firstborn. Yeah, you are the firstborn. So when you think about it, you are the firstborn relative to the offspring in your body you hold inside. Okay, so the ten plagues is not just for an allegory like Egypt and Exodus in the Bible. It's also what goes on in your body. You are being held accountable through the cancer, disease, chronic illness, autoimmune disorders, the aging process. You are the firstborn. That is when you see that you are like not maybe not relative to your family, but you are the firstborn and you hold offspring that could either mature and help you live or become so chaotic and they destroy you. And so when you have so much 
cancer in your body, all these juvenile cells that are, I guess, underutilized, unutilized, and not working for you, just taking, taking from you. Then eventually, when all the oncology and the surgeries and the herbs and the extracts and detoxes and all the diets, eventually, yeah, kill the offspring, but also destroy the parent cells. You, you end up in hospice. And so, yeah, remember I said what, res what you resist will persist? I said that, you know, I showed you all the different examples. What you resist will persist. And so I resisted the Bible so much. And I'm not even saying which version, just all of the versions. Not just one specific. Not the NIV or the King James or the Jehovah's Witness or the Hebrew Bibles. I'm talking about just... All the different testaments. The case point, I resisted the Bible so much, I found the answer in those stories. And that was Exodus, Genesis. And maybe there's other ones in the New Testament. But I, I, I was raised around the Old Testament. I was raised around that you don't worship the golden cow. But it's okay to worship the golden cow if the system allows it. But in reality, that's because you live in a Rosicrucian world called America and the West. And they're taken from different religions and even playing both sides. So if you had those that didn't believe in worshiping the golden cow and or the golden calf and didn't believe in just accumulating wealth, the other side of it, those those that broke off and I guess they were called the Canaanites and they worshiped the golden calf. They assimilated to that. They and so that's why there's a split in at least the Old Testament and even in the Jewish religion because you have again like orthodox reform hebrews jew for jews for jesus conservative kosher i mean oh gosh i mean it goes on and on and on and so the proof of all human accountability is in the bible the old and the new testament and all the spiritual dogmas and you can develop a religion to justify it and make dying okay what's it make dying okay i get it have at it relig ion is endless I tried to save people who might be beyond redemption. Sigh. They have their absolution. Remember, I tried. I am not the enemy yet again. And so we all personally reap what we have sown. When you do reap what you have sown, I hope it is not painful. I am so sorry you do not know my information sooner. And so those who want to face the pain, I hope you develop the clarity you are searching for. I cannot wait to hear your clarity one day. And some of you are in the anger stage or in the resistance stage. But at some point, I want to see some stage of articulation. Can you develop an argument for what's going on with this whole great reset? I want to hear some of you in the J world to actually develop that kind of argument. Or is that going to piss off your followers? Because you're catering to their acceptance of you. See, I, I understand what people's blocks are. I know. I, that's why I keep putting the pressure on. Because some of you will still cater to the resistance. You're straddling both sides. My world and their world. I, which one's going to win? We'll see. And so you know. You had to know how bad it would get. Everything. Everything could be much worse. But you could you survive it? Would you get out in time? Okay, so I wrote this because somebody posted a meme that intellectualized somebody get out of a harmful domestic violence situation. And it could be a male or a female that's under domestic violence. And it's easy to say, well, you should get out. It's easy to say, well, if someone's harming you or they're being mean to you, it's not you, it's them. And da -da -da. normal people do not go around destroying other people. Okay, uh, we get that. But the reason why they people purposely harm somebody and try to control them is because that's what they were taught because somebody took it in their world. <laughs> when a male or a female abuses somebody, hurts them, kicks them, does whatever, and that person still stays and takes their abuse, not only do they learn that in their family, but that person who took the abuse also learned that, that somebody in their family was able to take, took the abuse. And so they both have 50% responsibility in that situation. But, oh, 
you can't blame the victim because maybe it's the most dangerous. I mean, I took the domestic violence classes way back when. I even was on a hotline. I helped. I was on a hotline and answered the phones and even did some kind of campaign to donate to some domestic violence shelter way back in the 1990s, late 1990s. And so, and so when I took that 40 hour training class actually in Oakland, California, they're saying, yeah, the most dangerous time is when a woman leaves a situation. Yeah, it's the most dangerous time. Absolutely. That's why their shelters were there and they were anonymous. So then the abuser couldn't follow her and stalk her and then try to destroy her. And that's the issue is that we have developed families who take abuse, who give abuse, and then that gets translated to the children. And I mean, they've done studies around it. They see how it's a learned behavior. Taking abuse is a learned behavior and giving abuse is a learned behavior. And then you had to fight back. But if you fought back, would you destroy someone or would you walk away and find a way to protect yourself from that abuser? And sometimes when you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, that's where things can get very dangerous. Somebody has to die because they're approaching you and you have to defend yourself. And sometimes it comes down to that. And that goes through a court of law. So, and so the, so the, all the movies and the reality shows and even watch people on Facebook go through these processes of abuse and, and taking people's abuse and abusing somebody else. You had to see, you had to see how you behaved. If that's how you behave, what you have taken for so long. And then what's going to be, what your kids have already seen and what they're going to exhibit because they still have that trauma inside. So everything could be much worse, but could you survive it? Would you get out in time? You can't intellectualize to someone how to get out of a dangerous situation. There must be enough pain to remind them to get out of a potential dangerous situation before they end up dead or brutally injured. That's why there's combat training. Okay, you had to experience what you would experience in a wartime situation. And you had to build up the, the experiences and the courage because every single experience around brutality through a relationship, because you, there's some insidious types that happen in marriages and there's some pretty aggressive ones that happens in, in boyfriend, girlfriend situations. And when you collect those memories, you're either going to succumb to them, die from them and end up dying in that situation, or you're going to then get smarter and find a way to strategically either Put down your boundaries if you see it going down that direction or you leave if it's that bad. That's the thing. You Nobody can tell somebody else when's enough enough. Sometimes they have to die in that relationship or sometimes they have to leave it and go through that process. And sometimes they have to find a way to speak to, you know, this situation and hope that the other partner can find a happy medium so it doesn't get so bad. And that's that's everyone's individual situation. They have to figure out. And you can't tell someone, well, you should leave. You can't tell someone, well, you should reason with them. Like, again, you can't tell people. They have to go through that process themselves. And some people don't have what it takes to, to survive it. And so they stay in it until they die inside or they get out. But now they're so brutally injured that they'll be subject to somebody else's situation. And then... And so that's why there's combat training. Okay. You had to experience what you would experience in a wartime situation. And I will tell you, relationships are wartime situations. No different than the battlefield. How many of your children are prepared for the wartime situations in relationships? And that includes range marriages, boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. Okay. And you can't be the one to train your kids because you don't have the training. I'll tell you, scientists know how to train the people for whatever they need to train them for. And so if your kid is acting out or doing whatever, you know, if it's that bad, then you bring in a professional. But if you do nothing and everyone, everything is happy, joy, joy, and the kid is so homogenized and so protected, will they have what it takes when they go out to college or they get around a group of people and there's one cunning person who sees who is the most naive who has not been out there and basically train them to defend themselves because that person is going to try every way possible to 
to get what they want. And you hope that that first time dealing with that one cunning person is going to be okay, but there's no guarantee. We're predators walk among us, okay? And so most children out there have seen aggressive violence in movies and video games. And so some children even witness aggressive domestic violence in families. And yes, you might be remorseful, but you can't take back those images. So when a parent goes through that process and they are going through some hell with their significant other and these kids see it, I'm telling you, it's the programming is now there. And when you get people together who have been brutalized by the system because they had to show future people what happens when people are raised around a certain lifestyle, you become appalled at what you have supported for centuries. Okay? And so that's why you see all the articles all over Facebook and the reels. And you see what happens to Hollywood stars who have been under some aggressive programming. And you hear the stories, okay? And so Hollywood was the mirror. The scripted reality shows was transitioning the world so you actually the world you actually live in so to the world you actually live in. Okay, so you had Hollywood where like, oh, everything's make believe. No, not really. They're a reflection of you. They're the people that you go to school with that went into Hollywood and they had a specific upbringing, background, lifestyle, belief system, all of that. And now here they are, here they are. They, they ended up dying over there in Viper Room because they were part of a commune and they did all these different drugs. Or they, you know, they, they were under programming for this and that. And so they, the system utilized their talents from all that trauma-based programming, whether it was intentional or it was just something that was organic because that's what was in the culture at the time. And so, yes, you might be remorseful, but you can't take back those images. And when you get people together who have been brutalized by the system because they had to show future people what happens when people are raised around a certain lifestyle, you become appalled at what you have supported for centuries. Okay? Hollywood was the mirror. The scripted reality shows was transitioning to the world you actually live in. And it's downright scary. It is very scary. And now Hollywood is human to you because people like you went to, into Hollywood. And they're no different than you. And they were raised around aggressive violence and alcohol and drugs and domestic disputes. And brutalized by people in their world. Some didn't even survive their brutality. They endured it by so many predators around them. And so you hear about Corey Hain, Corey Feldman, and all the different people that were coming out about what they endured in, you know, in that world. But Hollywood is just a reflection of society. That's all Hollywood is. It's, it wasn't like they invented abuse. Abuse has happened 6,000 years ago. When you go to, again, third world countries, we don't go to them. They come to you. When you get some weirdo from, from a third world country coming on to your Facebook saying, show me your boobs, and it's broken English, you're like, yeah, that's somebody who is, who is a predator. And that's what they only think about is sex, and that's it. Sex, sex, and who they can take over. That's a third world country. That's someone that's not very sophisticated. But here in America, we have, sophist we have sophisticated people who also use sex as a weapon and a tool of control. So now you see what your ancestors have done to your grandparents, your parents, you, what you could potentially be doing to your kids or what you have done to your children who grew up to be adults we had to warn you about. That's why the system put you between a rock and a hard place. You had to protect your children from violent images and hold them accountable without turning them into psychopaths or sociopaths. And you had to do that really early on. You had to give a shit as a parent. You had to know images shape a person very early on. So again, that's why my mother protected me so much from the violent images. And when I was old enough to go on to sleepover, one sleepover, they showed the omen. Well, that wasn't so bad. I mean, it was not it wasn't. <laughs> but you knew what movies were coming out during that time. Freddy Krueger, Friday the 13th, Jason, Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, imagine a child seeing that. And they have violence against them. And they have sexual deviancy. You can only imagine what kind of psychopath we have developed in our society. And then you have the video games that are so realistic. Where you're controlling 
the little joystick and controlling that little thing that's walking around doing stuff to people. And you know, images shape a person very early on. So then you had the porn and the fast times at Ridgemont High and all the porn and the Larry Flint, Playboy, and all the sex bots. But if you turned your children into lovers, not fighters, then they would think sex would be the only way to get ahead until they get brutalized by sex. Then they turn dangerous, using sex as a weapon, or they get turned into prostitutes or go on OnlyFans or become somebody's wife and mother and brutalized that way, forced to have children. If they go with the wrong guy or to become a human trafficking victim because they fell for the wrong guy who whispered sweet nothings in their ear. There's a method behind the madness out there. You had to understand what the system has done and why so you can see what, what society has done to cultures for generations. Again, what's going on right now is no different than 6,000, 7,000 years ago. You had to see the generational violence and the aggressive, deadly intolerance and human hunting, humans hunting humans. It's very scary out there. The system knows exactly what they're doing and they had to show you, which is why we're in 1984, which is why we have a surveillance society. And you better be glad we have that because there are predators out there. And if there's cameras everywhere and cell phones pinging off of the towers, your kid might stand a chance and survive a situation, but it will only be a matter of time before they're in that again because they've already been programmed to run away, programmed to rebel, programmed for something. And so at this point, it's probably only moot. Now he's going to watch it unfold. And so when you are a part of a generation who has died and reproduced for centuries, you have a short memory. And the only way you're going to learn is to save yourself from these situations. And then you have to remember and feel the pain and never get into that situation ever again. But when you die and then you have children, when you die and, but when you die and then your children don't get the luxury to remember the pain, they have to re-experience it all over again and they may not even survive it. And many children do not survive their ignorance because their parents never gave them the training. The parents didn't even know how to. They kept giving them remedies, inducing trauma with the surgeries taking away their pain, bailing them out, giving them things so they can appease their, their desires. Here, Johnny, Billy, Susie, have a toy. You want a toy? Here's a toy. Get whatever the hell you want. I will have no boundaries. And if you screw up, I will bail you out. I will fix all your problems so you don't have to. And so do you have what it takes to save yourself when you have no combat training to get you out of a situation like this domestic violence situation without dying or being extremely injured in the process? How many women do not survive domestic violence because they had a very short memory, long history of abuse, and they are too weak to survive brutal situations such as some of those situations that are out there? And you can't intellectualize with people who have no memory of how to save themselves. Like I said, I can't tell people. I can't tell people anything. They have to feel it and experience it and know how to save themselves. That's why you talk about your experiences. If you're brave enough. Okay? That, that's why I couldn't prove people that oh, you could be immortal. Because I'm about proving to them. It's about feeling the pain of the body releasing. And then feeling the hunger to replace the energy that was used. That's basically what it is. And if you didn't want to feel pain and you're under the influence on your diets, then you would never get where I'm coming from. You'd be like that person who has a short memory, long history of abuse, who will not survive an aggressive energy conversion like climate change or an aggressive person who took complete control of your body, mind, and spirit. And that's human trafficking. Human trafficking is when a person has no memory of how to protect themselves. And they're so oblivious, so naive, They'll walk drunk after a bar by themselves at 2 a.m. in a dark alley, and then there's Jack the fucking Ripper. That's what we have trained some of these girls to do, is be hanging out with their friends, think that they're invincible because they're so beautiful, and everybody loves them, and they don't realize they left themselves open when they're separated from the flock because of whatever, and they end up missing. That's what we've trained our girls to be, is basically a target. For the predators out there, because we put so much emphasis on beauty and sexuality and wanting to be popular. 
And so fine, the system, if, this, if that's what you're addicted to, is, is basically marketing your daughters and sons to be your pride and fucking joy, weak as hell. And so then people will kill you with kindness, beat you with brutality, or love you to death. Those are the ways people are going out right now. That's why you have to understand the world you live in. Predatory behavior is not always someone who is obvious. Sometimes they are very charismatic and you have been treated so bad that you'll fall for anything, right? Be careful. But I guess if you plan to die anyways, you could be killed with kindness or brutality or be loved to death by everybody around you. And I choose none of the above. I choose none of the above. I, res I choose to respect myself forever. And so now look at your Facebook. And look at the mothers parading their daughters who are so pretty with all the makeup and the body and all the dresses and all the frilly curls and blah, blah, blah. They're basically putting, their, they're, they're marketing, they're putting their daughter and sons on slave blocks when you think about it. Because somebody will find where they are. And if they're that easy to take because they're so oblivious to the world they live in, it'll just be a matter of time. And they'll become somebody stable. What do you mean stable? Oh yeah, there's there's people out there with that are very rich that have a stable of women that they were stolen from areas that were parents didn't know how to treat how how to take how to how to warn their daughters what was going on. They paraded their daughters out there, and the daughter didn't know any better, and she fell for something, and she was left alone somewhere, and and there you go. It's not even just children or babies. It's these the women too that want to be all sexy. You make yourself a target and you could be a mother. You're like, oh yeah, this mother came up missing and she's a nice looking mother, right? She's gone. She, we don't know where the hell she is. Yeah, when you have a bunch of kids and you're going to the grocery store at like 8 o'clock at night after dark, some predator sees that, they follow her home, figure out where the hell she lives. It's not that difficult, people. Yeah, it gets bad. It gets this bad. And you see what's going on with Britney Spears. But she was so protected and so programmed and so sexualized. Now you're seeing that programming. Yeah, it gets this bad. Programming people to perform like, like, like this gets very bad. Now she's dancing with knives. If people choose to do this to their children, this is what happens. She made billions of dollars for many people and now she's spiraling. And how many mothers out there that I've talked to her in the last couple seven years where they're forcing their kids into gymnastics and beauty pageants and all the cheerleading I mean forcing <sighs> mama didn't wasn't a cheerleader mama wasn't a gymnast gymnast mama wasn't any of that so her daughter could be her daughter could be a beauty queen because their daughter represents what mother never could be because mama didn't think of anything but the body as a way to get ahead Mama is now misshapen and her daughter is now the extension of herself. Everything that she wasn't. If people choose to, die, to do this to their children, this is what happens. She made billions of dollars for many people and now she is spiraling. And she might have been under a different programming than Taylor Swift. Now look at Taylor Swift. And look at her with her boyfriend and all this stuff. Everyone's worshipping her. Maybe she ends up to be like potentially like a Grace Kelly, aging gracefully, right? And maybe not be completely spiral. Who knows? So she might be under different programming than Taylor Swift. T Swift might not end up being like this towards the end of her tenure. But we still have to thank you, Brittany, for all your contribution to the world. And so you will be seen. Many people from the 90s, 80s, and 2000s go off the deep end. Some will survive. Some will be like a falling star. Others will develop innovation for the future and still survive despite the programming. Everybody has some kind of crisis in their life, but you, will you survive the crisis in your life without going off the deep end? And if you think, I went off the deep end, absolutely. When I was getting so, so many articles written about me, so much backlash, and I, what did I do? I used a justice system against everyone that written articles against me. I used my Facebook Live. I even called people and and even went to court cases against them to their town. They never showed up because they thought probably I was some crazy person. I never went to their house when I was in that state 
But I went to court. I would go to court and I had everything written out. And who's to say that that they could have slapped whatever that that person had on me, but they didn't really have too much because I could show them exactly what they were doing in my world as far as radicalizing people to do whatever. And so, but then everything comes down to law. And do you have like the right to shut somebody up? But they have an opinion. Do you have the right to do that? No, you don't have the right. So that person, if they showed up, they could have won, but they were too afraid to confront me. We'd be too close in proximity. They were afraid of me. Not that I, well, I had those, <laughs> I had those silhouettes behind me. I remember that. <laughs> oh God. That's why she was afraid of me. Now, I wasn't going to do anything to her, but I was so pissed off of the world and I want to show everybody, I'm not going to be one to be fucked with. And then I should be like, I was doing target practice, not because I was going to hurt anybody to show you that I can defend myself. If I need be, but I would never go out and hurt somebody purposely, even in, even intellectually, spiritually, but you have the, the propensity to go after somebody physically and intellectually and spiritually but i was defending myself but again if you're not in mortal danger should you be premeditating you know calling someone a lot or whatever and so so but still i still went to court and i won that fucking case okay so that's the thing all right is that that's where i went off the deep end and i used the court system and if i had to be brought down to size then i would have taken my licks and whatever okay all right, so, and if you think I went off the deep end, absolutely, because that was the programming, and then I became an example. Remember, my mom was a Juris doctor, a JD. I knew the law was how was where you're going to get, was where you're going to figure out where you have the power or where you don't have the power. It's the law. It is, what is it? It's the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, that will govern the conduct of nations. So it will be in your benefit to understand the law. Okay. And so, um, and I became the example and I saw where I had to evolve and own up to whatever mistakes I made. And that's the lessons. Can you screw up and still own up to your shit and then become the best person ever? Trauma based programming will develop the best types of people. If they can survive the programming, some people will die under the programming. Others will find a way to live. Every single one of you have been under some kind of trauma-based programming and nobody escapes that in this world. But you do have a chance to survive it. And I know not everybody will. And we thank you for your service. And so then I said that the whole ice water plunging was never anything I endorsed. Now her family is warning people about the trendy cold plunge. She died from shock. So, you know, back in the couple years ago when people were like still taken up with all the holistic gurus jumping into cold water polar therapy cryotherapy all that shit that i was just like no i am not collaborating with you when you still buy into all the freaking therapies whether it's hot therapy hot sauna hot yoga or cryotherapy cold plunging breathing fucking games i'm not doing that and so that's why i released a lot of people next to me because they were still buying into all that trendy fatty bullshit so now you know why i don't work with anybody because they were trying to redirect what I was doing and they didn't want to get it. And they pushed back. They resisted me so much. I had to release them. Now you know why relationships, some relationships don't work because either you're going to assimilate to them or they're going to assimilate to you. And I'm not playing that game anymore. And now in this environment, you really think polar therapy, cryotherapy, hot saunas are going to fucking work to your benefit. We're going to be entering into a, a heat wave in the next couple weeks or so, or the next week or so over here in Ohio. That's going to be another growth spurt for people. Cancer, disease, chronic illness, remit, people get out of remission, diet suddenly are going to happen in the next couple weeks because of the heat. And it's a heat dome is going to be right around the Northeast and Ohio is right in the fucking target. You really think all of your little therapies are going to work for you in this world? Okay, I gotta pee, hold on.
Yeah, I have to drink coffee. I don't have to, but I like to, and I have to pee right afterwards. Oh, shit. <sighs> okay. So, now the thing with MK Ultra. Hold on. So, here about MK Ultra is a CIA based training program that was done formally as experiments back in the 1950s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And even probably back in the, yeah, 40s because of World War II. They had that trauma based programming through all the different Nazi scientists. Okay. So, MK Ultra was just copying what blood type A and B blood types go through daily. And so it's a trauma-based programming. It's just, you know, one person lobs one grenade or throws energy and it inflicts pain or type of suffering and energy on another person. They throw back and it's back and forth. So MK, so when people are MK ultra victims, they are getting things done to them through electroshock therapy, um, somebody hitting them or they're in a combat type of training situation or somebody doing stuff where they can't even protect themselves or where they can try to protect themselves, but they can't really uh, do anything to the other person. And so, um, yeah, <laughs> MK Ultra was just copying what blood type A and B blood types go through daily. So blood type A and B have antigen antibody programming. So when you have an antigen antibody and you can just be a blood type A or blood type B, whatever antigen antibody, it's like there's a conflict. There is a mutually assured destruction. It's causing fireworks using up energy. And then a blood type A and B person then has the cunning, the intellectual capability. They don't have a lot of body because they're under so much of that energy conflict, that antigen antibody programming. And so that's why a lot of them are skinny and are on specific diets or specific food intakes because of that programming. And so it's all programming at the micro and macro level, constant fireworks. And so what I was raised with was constant fireworks, a constant struggle all the time. And I remember some of the struggles where, where I, I could have, I was in a situation where I could have hit back, but I never did. I always kept my hands to myself. No matter what was going on, it wasn't like, it was, uh, I forget, but I remember the struggle and I never did hit back. But it wasn't like, well, see, I never, yeah, I never did hit back. And so those fireworks make you smarter based upon the nurturing programming. You had to match the programming with the energy. Okay, so if you're gonna if you're gonna have that kind of fireworks, whether it's the antigen antibody programming, then you better put mathematics or physics or real estate or some kind of programming in a specific occupation or a specific uh, specialty. So that or like music or something. So then that person can process that information faster and grab onto those concepts sooner versus someone who's like a type O, which is a little bit slower reaction time, right? And it might take them longer. So I was a type O in my family and my sister is probably a type A and B. So my parents didn't have to do too much to her when you think about it. I mean, she had to go through her own bullshit. But it was me that had to go through a lot more bullshit because I didn't have the programming inside. I had to have the program on the outside. And so now I understand what the scientists were doing, what they were trying to prove is that nature and nurture. And so when you have constant fireworks in your house and then there's specific programming, it could be violence, it could be sexuality, it could be physics, it could be math, it could be chemistry, it could be acting, it could be whatever it is that is purposely done or just organically there that kid now is radicalized, right? That entered the, those fireworks radicalized them. And it could be even politics. No wonder people are radicalized, you know, right now in the right wing or left wing world, because they had all this different programming, constant fireworks, whether internally or externally. And then they're reading subversive material that then they're like, oh my God. And then now they are pundits. They're influential in politics, religion, and science. And so when you get someone who, is, who has the antigen antibody program of type A and type B, and also the MK Ultra of external type of energetic responses and, and programming, then you get the radicalized religions, the religious people who are so radicalized in their beliefs. So you put a Bible in front of someone who has been brutalized outside or brutalized inside through the antigen antibody programming. Now you get the cult leaders 
Now you get the super, super religious people that you can't penetrate because they've been programmed to such a degree. And they're dying to reproduce and on top of that. Okay? And so it's all programming at the micro level and macro level. And now I fucking get it. Why I can't penetrate a lot of religious folk because the programming runs so deep. Constant fireworks. And those fireworks made you smarter based upon the nurturing programming. You had to match the programming with the energy. Not so much smarter. I mean, maybe. But why do you think these kids know the Bible like the back of their hand? Well, they had somebody maybe hitting them and getting them to respond or what is that? The, the positive and negative reinforcement. Or they've had the blood type in them to constantly be reading the Bible day in. And, and it could be any Bible. It could be the Old Testament, New Testament, Jehovah's Witness, uh, the Hebrew Bible, the Christian Bible, the or even the Koran. Okay, and then you get the extremism. Because of the energy, the radicalization. Radicalization can happen, obviously, on the outside, MK Ultra, or on the inside, the blood types. <laughs> and so when they wanted to cure you, cure you in the programming, that's why you took all your remedies and even do the surgeries until your body couldn't handle any more treatment and surgeries. And so when you, when you get sick, right, cold and flu season, spring allergy season, and the body's not trying to push out that really aggressive programming because it is destroying your infrastructure. Not that you're going to lose your gifts that were given to you during those times. Because they're all kind of gifts or curses or spells, whatever you want to call it. But the body's still trying to release that programming. And then what do you do? You take another, you take a cure. You take, you know, ginger root and tea and and remedies and other things. And so then it's attempting to keep that programming in place. Not that you would lose it, but it's attempting to, to not have you go through that energy conversion of evolution. And so you stayed cured for a certain amount of time. All right. And until your body couldn't handle any more of the treatments and surgeries. And so oncology destroys your evolution and your diets and starvation starved your parent cells. Your parent cells had to mature to teach the juvenile cells. But when you are starving your parent cells because of the diets and you're adding more kids to your body with all the herbs and the extracts and the detoxes, then you have a bunch of kids who have not been trained properly by anyone mature in the body. And if there were sort of mature cells in the body, they were deteriorating just like grandma. No different than when grandma gets her dementia and she can't teach you anything more. But whatever she did teach you, she taught you how to destroy your life through the remedies and surgeries and diets. And she might have given you some advice about occupations, but whatever advice she gave you around love and occupation is overshadowed by the fact you won't live to see it long enough. But just enough until you are overtaken by the diversity in your body and thus you know how to redirect. And so you succumbed to the trauma or you were eating, eaten alive by the little offspring you couldn't release on the inside of your body, the Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail, Hermetics, Hermetics, Rosicrucian, blood type O received external trauma-based programming. And that's why there's a lot of people out here in Ohio who are physically strong because they went through their own external trauma-based programming. Their dads made them stronger. Their peers made them stronger. They always got in fights, maybe bar fights and and skirmishes with other people who were different than them and all that. And so they got stronger through their environment, through the external side of it. But blood type A and B, internal trauma-based programming. Then you had those on the coast. Those that were in academia that were getting programmed for physics and technology and chemistry. And then you might have some a mixture of both blood type O and A and B, well, blood type O nurturing into, into like physics and chemistry if they had a different kind of programming. Okay, so regardless of blood type, any kind of trauma-based programming internally and externally can develop some crafty, cunning, killer people, literally destructive, psychopathic people. So Charles Manson was an O negative. So he was an RH negative. And so he was negative for the RH factor, but he was trained externally. He had brutality done to him. So if he didn't have it internally, he was trained externally and it made him a serial killer. But he didn't kill anyone. He just got other people to destroy. But he harmed people. He cut off somebody's ear. 
okay? And so regardless of blood type, any kind of trauma-based programming internally and externally can develop some crafty, cunning, killer people, literally destructive, psychopathic people. This is why some girls don't stand a chance out there. Their parents did not adequately protect them because they wanted them to look so beautiful. But they made their child a target. I can only imagine what it's going to be like when they get to be 20 or 30. These young girls that are now going into college and they're going to be around predators. Boys that have been sexualized so aggressively. Who knows what's in their background. They're going to bring them home because the guy is so charismatic. Oh look, he came from a good family. But you see how people in good families, like in these colleges, and they did something to those girls, raped those girls on college campus, and he still is out. He, he didn't really get jail time because his parents had a good lawyer. Oh, yeah. Bring home a, a guy from college. You don't know his background. And he looks good on paper. But imagine once he gets that girl into his target sites and gets her so under his influence. And then, oh, God. And you know predators and psycho killers walk among you. And they look for the easiest target. Naive, beautiful girls and boys who think they own the world. That's the depopulation agenda. And there are boys who will leave themselves open because they were not adequately prepared, protected and trained to deal with people out there. Sexual deviancy knows no bounds. That's why you must redirect your children from that death trajectory. Because traditions are weakening your children and they don't have the discernment to understand how cunning some of these predators are. And it could be even women, too. But if you don't know all the battlefronts, you might win one battle and succumb to another. Why do you think human trafficking is at an all-time high? The predators found their targets. Predators are psychologically cunning, and they know how to play to the weaknesses of these children out there. Even the beautiful women who are dying to become rich and famous, and so they fall for whatever somebody else tells them. Oh, here's a modeling gig. Oh, I'll take care of you for the rest of your life. Oh, I'll date you and give you whatever the hell you want. I mean, I'll tell you, predators, when they want something, a body, a mind, or a spirit, they will promise you the fucking world, and they even look visually pleasing. Right now, beauty is manufactured, and it's easy to use filters. Remember how influential visual images are. Okay, so that's why porn was so lucrative way back in the 19, you know, 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And so when you go to places like, you know, that are not heavily into the intellect and innovation, but they're more, let's say, blue collar. And so they're getting, so there's Playboy magazines, penthouse magazines, porn, and Fast Times at Ridgemont High that's uncensored. And so these kids in high school are so sexualized. No wonder you have all these single mothers at 15 and fathers now having to pay child support because the circumcision plus all the images program them to be very predatory not that they mean to be but that's they couldn't they couldn't withstand the programming it was all around them it was their friends their family their peers it was tv and so then you have these really cunning men and women who do what they have to do to get what they need but it's not really to help society when you think about it they're just getting what they want, and then they're going to go and, and, and squander it off for whatever. But are they going to take what they have brought into the world and turn it into something amazing? No, there, it's going to be now then drugs and alcohol and crazy sex or just sucking the life out of somebody else. <laughs> now look at your Facebook. Look at the women's profiles trying to sell you sex, not balance. Look at them posting their pretty daughters all over Facebook. They're making themselves a target. That's the depopulation agenda. Okay, so that's on one end. And so that's what I'm saying with the whole J world. If you want to get some kind of control over your hormones so you don't inadvertently be like a spider luring a fly into your web and then sucking the life out of them, maybe release some of those demons and figure out what your intention is for people around you and for men and women that you're trying to lure into your web. Why are you trying to lure them into your web? What are, you, what are you looking for? What's your intention? But you see how our society has been programmed just to suck the life out of somebody else. At any, with any means possible. 
And so, which is why I advocate people open up their immune system the way I have in my book. Not only do you need to cough, sneeze, and blow your nose, but you must understand the importance of personal ritual release process that does not compromise your immune system. Or else you are taking time bomb. It's just a matter of when, especially in this environment. Heart attacks and strokes versus schizophrenia. So, now we're looking at the different voices in people's heads, right? They get those, those aggressive voices like schizophrenia, mental illness. And when you have a bunch of, like, a bunch of antibodies, some of them are mature antibodies like B cell lymphocytes, and some of them are NKT cells that are not mature. Because there's NKT cells that are mature and then there's those that are not mature. The, uh, the immature, naive, natural killer T cells, when they're so numerous, right? You can have an autoimmune disorder and be battling that. But they also can mess with someone's thinking. Why do you think you get serial killers out there? Not only have they been programmed to go and destroy and whatever, but they also have a, probably a vast amount of natural killer T cells that are guiding their processes. Just like the NK T cells are programmed to go after specific antigen. Okay? What's antigen? Something that is challenging their existence or they were programmed to go after and destroy when it's programmed to say, okay, well, let's just say, for instance, the color red was programmed by that natural killer T cell to go after. So that red comes into the body. The NK T cell has a program that says go after anything that's red. And so when red comes in the body, that NK T cell hunts for that red thing. There's a signal that says a red thing, a red thing came into the body. The NKT cell then goes and gathers its forces and goes and attacks and neutralizes that red thing. Doesn't mean the red was poison, it was just programmed to go after that red object. So imagine when someone's programmed against women, against academics, against men or specific things like mannerisms or cultures or belief systems. Can you imagine a person who has been programmed that way in their environment, nurtured into intolerance, nurtured into destructive tendencies, when someone fits that specific programming of what they're supposed to go after and destroy, that's where serial killers come from. They, they either search for the weakest link, weakest link or they search for a specific person that has they've been programmed to destroy through their environment. That's called human hunting. Right, but demon cells inside torture people. All right, and so, and they also guide person's situation, or they guide, tell them they're telling them what to do. Okay, so let me let me go into further this. Demon cells inside torture people. I never understood what they meant by voices in schizophrenia. They actually hear a different voice. So that video that I posted, the, the hidden pandemic, is about mental illness. And that also includes schizophrenics who hear voices. And you're like, whoa, that's creepy. Not so, And then people think it's like it's ghosts or something supernatural. But you think, yeah, on some level it is. Like I said, spirits and ghosts are the DNA and RNA missing, but the spirit of that energy is still floating around, residual, and it's looking for... The weakest thing to go it's like a little spermy going into some entity that has dna and try to take over remember a couple years ago or a couple months or a couple years a year ago or so you saw during the frequency change the little uh orbs that were around me and i was going through my own energy conversion of releasing demons and so i had portals open and portals open and closing and so i was attracting those vampiric spirits those orbs that were looking for a way in to go then and try to take over. That's supernatural. That's what happens even during schizophrenic. It's energy that has been programmed to be very destructive and highly influential. Okay? But have you seen any orbs lately? Not so much. I have now a very effective immune system. The portals are not so open. And maybe they're not even beckoning the other spirits out there to come in and take over. Okay? So... Demon cells inside torture people. I never understood what they meant by voices in schizophrenia. They actually hear different voices, evil voices telling them to do stuff. So what's schizophrenia? A disorder that affects a person's ability to think, feel, and behave clearly. 
The exact cause of schizophrenia isn't known, but a combination of genetics, environment, and altered brain chemistry and structure may play a role. The exact cause of schizophrenia are unknown. There's two definitions that I copied. Research suggests a combination of physical, genetic, and psychological and environmental factors can make a person more likely to develop the condition. Some may be prone to schizophrenia and a stressful or emotional life event might trigger a psychotic episode. Okay, so if you had something happen to you as a baby, as a child, that you blocked for whatever reason because it was so traumatic and the only way you can survive that situation was to block it, right? We know that happens when people have multiple personality disorders. That they've had to develop different personalities in order to survive a situation that may have been ongoing or spontaneous that was so aggressive they had to block it. But, but... There could be triggers in the environment that would then wake up that specific event and then people react. And I'll tell you, when, you, when you're out there in the population and you're trying to be an enforcer or talk to someone or tell someone something that you know is, they're not going to like, you don't know what the hell is going to trigger them to do stuff. So you don't, you don't mess with people in the public. You be as kind and as nice as possible in public. Not so much to your friends and family, because if your friends and family are doing shit, you walk away. But you, you know, you kind of know what their background is, so you know they're relatively safe. But to strangers out there, you don't fuck with strangers out there. You do not. You don't know their background. You don't know their lifestyle. You don't know what's going to trigger them. So you be as 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 kind and nice as possible to strangers. All right. And so, because you never know, you could trigger a psychotic episode in a stranger just by what you said, or if you're like being offensive driving and you're flipping somebody off or honking at them so incessantly, you don't know what will trigger them. They'll pull out a big, huge whatever and just take out your whole car. You don't want to do that out there. So when you think of the antibodies in your body and that becomes a conscious presence and they become so influential, they turn a person into a killer. When you have so many antibodies that want to destroy certain things based upon the programming, while B cells produce antibodies to fight infection NK or natural killer T cells protect people from getting infected by destroying cancerous and infected cells. But it doesn't mean that infection is a bad thing. Okay? It might be or might not. But when you have so many of those NK T cells destroying your evolution and then they take over your body and they've been programmed based upon your lifestyle, your belief systems, what you're raised with, and even specific events and ongoing events, maybe in your childhood, those NK T cells can turn into something that would be so influential and potentially even turn you into a psycho killer. So what if NK T cells become so numerous? T cells are known as T lymphocytes. The T stands for thymus, thymus, the organ in which these cells mature and is opposed to B cells which mature in the bone marrow. Mature T cells are produced in the thymus and released into the bloodstream in low numbers. These cells are considered to be immunologically naive until such time as they encounter MHC peptide complexes for which their T cell receptors have high affinity or they mature. That's why they're trying to control reproduction carefully. Naive children destroy. That's why you have those movies, The Village of the Damned, The Children of the Corn, you know, Pet Cemetery, um, the, the Bad Seed, The Omen. All of these are based upon children who are so destructive. And you know kids out there are destructive. I'll tell you, children are more destructive than adults because they don't know their powers. Just like with the whole Vampire Diaries. They didn't want to allow a vampire child to live because that child does not know its own boundaries. But that child was a hybrid in, what was it, Twilight. That's why the, the council or they defended that child because the child was half human and half vampire, which meant that it could probably control its urges of, of eating, you know, eating exponentially. But... In the world where they come from, in the vampire world, right? You're not supposed to have a full vampire child. If you're going to turn somebody, it had to be an adult, not a child. So now you see how the allegory is fitting in with what's going on even scientifically and even with the Georgia Guidestones and even the Bible. So the thymus gland is in the chest between the lungs and behind the breastbone or sternum. It is just in front of and above the heart. The thymus makes your white blood cells called T lymphocytes. These are also called T cells. These are an important part of the body's immune system, which helps to fight infection. 
It is assumed that T lymphocytes produce interferon Y, which inhibits smooth muscle cell proliferation. Thus, it might be that the relative depletion in the T lymphocytes is not just a marker, but also a causative factor in the deterioration of myocardial function in AMI and heart failure. Smooth cell muscle proliferation. So this might be that the relative depletion in the T lymphocytes is not just a marker, but also a causative factor in the deterioration of myocardial function. And so, I mean, we think about heart attacks and strokes and the deterioration. So what, what's, what is it? Is it like is now all that stuff is shedding off your muscle and now it's becoming this thing that blocks and then also destroys and, you know, deteriorates. And so there's, I got to smooth out that specific thing. That's why I say open, like open your immune system up here to release whatever demons that would cause then a depletion. Because you could have things fighting against each other. You don't know what is eating up your T lymphocytes. It's hard. Remember, auto, what is it? No, AIDS. AIDS is where your immune system is being eaten up by some kind of Pac-Man type of situation. Okay? And so if your immune system is deteriorating, then yeah, I can see then heart failure. I could see. And that's what you saw. The AIDS virus, it, it was an immunological response. And it was a response that ate up your immune system. Okay, and so that's why I say open up the top part, blow your nose, cough and sneeze, and understand the, 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 the bottom part of the elementary canal, which I tell you in my book, how to release those demons. But, uh, yeah, so heart attacks and strokes come from the deterioration of your immune system because of how numerous, too, your immune, like how overly immunized you are by all the, not only the remedies, not only the, the public health therapies that you're not releasing, but also the remedies. Hey, Ashley, also the remedies, okay? And so when you think about all the therapies program billions and billions of people and trillions and trillions of cells, then you can imagine if you're not releasing those demons, how they can break down your immune system and break down your whole infrastructure. However, there will be a right combination for whatever intention there is. So if there's an intention to destroy you, there'll be a right combination, you'll be destroyed. If there's a combination that will cause you to be innovative or, um, uh, I don't know, if there's an intention to cure something, okay, because you know all these different therapies and programs have all these different intentions, and some you know about, some you don't. And so you'll be an experiment. Like when you have parents that have medical records that are like at Kaiser and then you go to Kaiser and you have medical records and they can see that you are related to your parents. They will see what your parents dealt with, what the grandparents dealt with, what your kids are dealing with. And they can do the research to see how, what therapies they received, what diseases they have, all the tests and everything. That's lab experiments, human experimentation. And that's been your world. And so then there will be a right combination for whatever the intention there is. No different than so many generations of people experimented upon with all the therapies and surgeries and there will be a right combination for whatever the intention there is. Nature and nurture go hand in hand, which is why blood types are so important because they are the programming. Antigen is whatever proteins are programmed to go after and or defend against. It is a mutually assured destruction because it's a war and it uses up resources. And so type A and type B have a very specific antigen antibody programming, but which is why some of them might be a bit more cunning and smarter and even psychopathic. That's what I said, the NKT cells. These chemical reactions, those constant explosions gave them the massive amounts of intellectual capability and highly intelligent. So I go switch from the micro, which is all those, those antigen antibody programming to the macro, which is a person who is now reacting to that constant energy conversion and so their brains are working really fast because it's the energy that gives them the brain power and then you can also program type O but there must be an outside antigen antibody programming such as somebody doing positive negative physical reinforcement and it could be basic training it could be somebody hitting you like boxing making you stronger right and so you can have type O and type A type a and B compete on a level playing field because they both receive the conditioning internally and externally. 
Now I understand. Okay? So so when, when I would study for a test like the insurance exam, I knew that I had to brainwash myself into the information. And I had to sit and completely submerge myself in insurance questions and answers. Brainwashing is what's going to get you to pass tests. Brainwashing is going to get you to believe in a, in a politics, religion, or science dogma. Brainwashing is every single program programming attached to whatever trauma-based programming you underwent, whether it's from your from events in your life that were so traumatic to somebody doing something to you internally or externally, or your childhood, or even your friends and family, reinforcing specific programming. And then that's where people get blindsided because they're so heavily into that programming, they miss the other storylines that they have to also survive because we're in a Rosicrucian society. There's probably a billion storylines you have to be aware of. And the ones that you know about are all over the internet. And the ones you don't know about are the ones you will finally figure out when you become unblinded and you realize that you can't just rely on your religion or your political thought process or your science dogma. You had to understand the other arguments so you can save yourself and maybe potentially give your kids something else to work with, another path so they can save themselves because you can't do it for them. Okay? But that's why it's so prudent that you cannot be one-sided. When you are run by 10, 20, 30, 100 different religions, you have to understand all of them. And if you don't understand all of them, understand that if you don't want to die someday, you couldn't take away the pain. You had to feed it. And I've, and I've shown you in a very short book that... You had to understand you had to eat all food. You couldn't you couldn't be afraid of GMO, and you had to stay away from the herbs and the extracts and the detoxes. And you had to open up your system, and you had to feel the pain and the suffering. And if you had to treat it, then that would be laying the groundwork to a diet suddenly. Okay. And so when I said in this picture, parasite destroyers. Like the oregano oil, the pumpkin seeds, right? Olive leaf extract, wormwood, garlic and onion, ground papaya seeds, grapefruit seed extract, black walnut. You're just when you're using those, you're developing offspring that are going to attack those types of proteins when you expose yourself to those proteins in your food supply. Then you become allergic to garlic and onions. Then you become allergic to ground papaya. You become allergic to, to papaya. You become allergic to citrus. You become allergic to walnuts. You'd have a nut allergy because you're using those types of remedies, developing antibodies. Because those foods, like the oregano oil and the clove oil and the black walnut, even though they might be in like a spice that could be in your in your cookies and in your seasoning, but when you're taking those in such aggressive level, mixed with industrial grade solvents, byproducts of industrial grade solvents, then you've just weaponize the food supply against your body. That's what the holistic world has done. They've created children who are weaponized against the food supply or can't handle food. They're food intolerant because they were an offspring of someone who was using all of those remedies, the alchemy. That's why these kids are weaker because they can't handle the food supply or their environment because they came from a war against the food in their world. That's why the system is cleaning up the system because they fucked up so many people through the remedies market. Then, then, what is it? Shit. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Hold on. I got off the page that I meant to be on. Then as far as that domestic violence, you can't intellectualize. If someone treats you badly, just remember that is there's there's something wrong with them, not you. Normal people don't go around destroying other human beings. And I said in between that, people have short memories. They don't remember the pain of predatory behaviors. They are part of a long line of people who have forgotten what it's like to be brutalized. And so when you're into dying and reproducing, your kids do not have the luxury to remember the pain and the suffering that you went through, what your grandparents went through, what your great grandparents went through. And so they will have to relive all of that, like Groundhog Day, all over again. And some may not even survive it. Because again, they came from a war against the food supply. 
that their body, their mother's body became so fertile from all the, the, the alchemy that now that kid is a representation of the intolerance at the time of conception. And that's why these kids have food allergies. Because they were a product of intolerance at the time of conception. Because alchemy develops fertility. And then you develop demons in the body as well as in the community. And that's why we have so many agencies to regulate these children and adults who are out of control on so many levels and suffering astronomically. That's why we're in a great reset. Have a good day.